guys, I want to talk for a minute about why I chose to use 407C as a replacement for R22 systems. There's been a wide debate on the practice of installing 407C with the oil into a system. We're not going to really get into that. I'm just going to get into the overall reason why I chose 407C. I do add the oil on top of the existing mineral oil, and that's the way that I do it, and I've had no issues with it so far. My experience is between one and two years systems running in the field, so not a, not a super long time, but so far I've been pleased with how it's worked. But when you get with 407C, you're going to have to introduce oil into the system. But what about other refrigerants that can be used as R22 replacements? Now we have everything from 421A, 427A, 422B, 422D, and many, many more. 438A, which is MO99. Why didn't I choose these other refrigerants instead of 407C? Well, the first reason is 407C has the best capacity compared to R22. Now, have I confirmed this in the field? I have not. This is what I'm doing with research behind the scenes, not in the field. Although, I may actually do some testing with the 407C units as I service them uh, years after I work on them. I've already serviced a few as spring maintenances. I may start doing a little bit more as far as capacity testing, see what they're running at. Next time I convert one, I may do a before and after. But the problem is, whenever I convert a 407C unit, I'm not converting a working R22 unit to 407C for the purpose of only replacing refrigerant. It's always in a repair, which is the issue. I, I would never convert a system that was running properly from 22 to 407C just to convert it. To me, that makes no sense at all. Why would you take a working system and replace the refrigerant in it? R22 is the best refrigerant for that system. So until that system fails or needs to be repaired, there's no reason to change refrigerants. Like I said, R22 is the best. Don't mess with the best. 407C is second. The biggest drawback, or two biggest drawbacks to 407C is the fact that it will fractionate badly, which means that the components will separate easily if the system is leaking. If you have a vapor style leak with 407C, you will have certain parts of the refrigerant boiling off faster than other parts, so you have an uneven leak. That's why you can't weigh it in as a gas, because you get one of the blend refrigerants over the other refrigerants when you do that. It has to be a certain mixture of, let's see, 134A, I think 125, and R32. Very similar to 410A, except for the 134A. You can see that 134A was introduced to lower the pressure to an R22 level. Typically, the head pressures on 407C are a little bit higher than R22, and the suction pressures are a little bit lower. Refrigerants like MO99, if you look at MO99, it's like, man, I would never use MO99, but I love 407C. Well, I mean, MO99 is almost 407C. Same components, except you're adding either isobutane or butane to them for oil return. And think about that. Think about what's going on there. We've had a lot of contradiction about, or not just contradiction, but arguments over, will the oil return properly on a 407C system in which we add POE on top of mineral oil? So far, my contention is yes, it will. MO99 is a good example of a reasoning behind that thought. This is why I say that. MO99 has the same refrigerants as 407C in it, except for the isobutane used to carry the oil. It's a very small amount of isobutane, less than 3.5%, because at a certain point, if you put isobutane into a refrigerant, after it passes a certain percentage, it raises its flammability rating. And MO99 has a zero flammability rating because it keeps that point really small. But that's all that's being used to carry that oil around. Think about that. They're using that to carry the oil around. We're using a small amount of POE. 
doing the same job. MO99 is very similar to 407C, and that's why if I didn't use 407, I'd probably use MO99. It's the, to me, it's the next best thing. But just like all the other ones, they fractionate, they separate very badly, so if you have a leak, you can't really top it off. I personally think you probably could top off a relatively small amount of refrigerant, but if you have to top off, let's say you have a six pound capacity in the system and you have three pounds low, and you can usually tell when something's very low, I mean, you have a very low suction pressure, I probably wouldn't top that off. But if it was a few PSI shy, a few superheat shy of the target, I think you probably could. Now you can't go out and do that and say, Zach said I could do it, and my machine blew up, so I'm suing Zach. No, Zach's officially disclaimer. If you do this shit, it's on you. Okay, now that we got that out, if you do this shit, it's on you. That's why you think about it. You don't say Zach said to do it, because Zach's just a tech just like you. I'm giving you reasons why I did it. I like the stuff. I mean, I've used tons of it. My scrap pile, there's a bunch of orange bottles laying back there. But other refrigerants, you know, your 422Ds, Bs, 421A, 427A, 421A and 427A, even though people don't use POE, it says that they're best with POE. So if you're gonna use those refrigerants, you might as well do the same 407C oil adding that I do. Because those particular refrigerants, they need POE. Now 422D and B, they have the same isobutane to carry around uh, the oil as MO99. And think about these, all these are using R600, R600A butane to carry around the oil. So what is the big difference between that and topping off POE? putting POE on top. Just think about it. You're saying like that's oil logging the system. Is it not true that most of the time when you're doing these repairs, you're removing a component that contains oil or you're working on a system that's been leaking, which is actually leaking oil as well. Think about it. If I change an evaporator because it was leaking, I've lost oil anyway. So I'm basically adding oil back. Now I might add more back than I lost, but I still have lost some oil. If I change a compressor, well, that's going to be charged with POE, so I guess that doesn't matter. Let's say I change the accumulator. I change an accumulator and I want to switch to 407C. That accumulator that I'm taking out contains a bit of mineral oil anyway. So adding the POE back is not going to overload the system with oil. If you think about it, it's no different than when you go out and you change a compressor. Let's say you change a compressor and you use R22. We got POE in that compressor now and you have mineral oil scattered throughout the system. Are you gonna clean all that mineral oil out? Any of you who said yes, I call bullshit because you're gonna let them mix together. I mean, that's just how it's gonna be. Just think about these subjects. Think about how we have this idealistic argument of I never do this, we have to do this, we have to do this. Think about the things that are out there, the products that are out there, how they utilize oil return, how they promote oil return think about what we've talked about with 407C. And maybe it's not quite as crazy as it seemed. Maybe it's not quite as out there as it seemed. Is 407C better than 410A? No. 410A has a higher pressure, which is kind of annoying. But R32 is an excellent refrigerant. It's an excellent refrigerant. 410A has R32, so does 407C. 407C fractionates badly. R14A fractionates just a little bit. So it's better. It's a good refrigerant. The biggest pain in the ass is that the fact that it works at a higher pressure. Of course, you know, you say things, higher pressure equals more leaks. They say the components are made to withstand these higher pressures. But to me, in an age when components are made cheaply, uh, Chinese components, you can see up on the accumulators, down to everything else that we use. I say the leaks are going to continue to be an issue. I haven't seen a problem with evaporator coils since they turned to aluminum. They haven't been as bad, but there's still been evaporator leaks. But Alright guys, well I thought I'd talk a little bit about that. I don't know if I changed anybody's mind on 407C, and I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to tell you my reasoning behind it. 
and also that you know R22 is the best. So if you use R22, I mean you're using the best refrigerant. It's expensive as shit, but I mean it's still better than 407C. There's no way 407C is going to be better than R22. You might be saving people money. And think about what you're doing. Now you're changing an evaporator and you're pumping down R22 into the condenser and you might have to add a couple pounds. There's no reason to change that system to 407C. What's the point? For two pounds of refrigerant you have to add R22? I mean, there's no point to it. You're going to take out eight more pounds just so you can add 407C? And you're like, well, they're going to change over and you won't be an R22 left in a few years. Well, I mean, the hell with that. It's a few years from now. Who cares? If the system doesn't leak again, it's never going to matter. So just some food for thought, guys. 407C, 410A, R22. Good stuff. See you on the next one.